Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast, and I'm your host, TW, flying solo for now. BQ had some scheduling conflicts, so I'm going to hold us down until he gets back, all right? Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so that you get an alert. Anytime we drop some new content, you'll, you'll know as soon as it comes out. All right, now, let's not bury the lead. This was a news-heavy week for Impact, and the main thing people are going to be talking about coming out of this show was the closing angle between Rich Swan and Kenny Omega, and with good reason, because this was great. We had a press conference set up with Scott Demore and Rich Swan on one side, and Kenny Omega, some AEW advisor, and some empty chairs on the other side. Kenny Omega, oh, Kenny Omega was, of course, fashionably late to the event, because why? Why would you show up on time for something booked by Impact? You know? Uh, just continues the theme here. Um, this looked and it felt like a real press conference in 2020. It had digital questions from the media that were sent in via video and text. And there were actually real members of the media involved. There was uh, Andres Hale from the Sporting News, Mike Johnson from PW Insider, uh, Ariel Helwani from ESPN, uh, among others. So they had, you know, legitimate names from legitimate outlets who have powerful amplified amplified voices in the the social media sphere that were out here talking about this product and participating in an impact event. So for anybody who's had any question on whether or not the working relationship between AEW and Impact has had a benefit to Impact, there's your answer right there. Because when was the last time you saw legitimate media and sports media, other than Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson's been riding with Impact through the highs and the lows. But for the most part, I mean, you know, some of these organizations were out here talking about they no longer recognize Impact as a world title. Like, give me a freaking break. And now here we are with major news outlets like ESPN participating in an angle to promote uh, an Impact Wrestling pay-per-view. So any questions, right? Any doubts anybody might have had about the uh, the value to Impact in working with AEW, this should answer all the questions that you have right there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you see a, a spike in ratings from week to week. Impact is more relevant through working with AEW, period, hard stop. All right. So the way this would go is each guy would get a, get a question and you know, they, they would answer it, you know, in, in kayfabe, you know, in, in kind of that work shoot style. And one of the things that really stood out to me about this whole angle was when the question would come from the media, something to the effect of, how do you guys plan on handling the responsibility of the champion who has to carry both titles? You know, will you be at both shows? Tony Khan's responses were like, well, Kenny Omega has the freedom to be at both shows. I'm confident he can fulfill both responsibilities. Whereas Scott Demore's responses were more like, well, whoever wins, I'm confident we'll do what we have to do. I mean, if there was ever a dead giveaway to say that, you know, you have no intention and no thought in the slightest that Rich Swan will be winning this match and carrying these titles, I mean, good guy, could you give it away any clearer other than, you know, letting us sit in on the creative meetings and if i was rich swan right imagine being like a fighter or 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 or, or a basketball player or a football player and you're sitting there next to the coach and they're talking about an upcoming contest and at no point does your coach or manager that you're sitting with give any indication that they think you're gonna win i'd be pissed so if you're Rich Swan, you have to feel some type of way about the way that, you know, this was presented from Impact's end going forward. But in all honesty, it's consistent with the way that Impact has 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 been portrayed in this relationship the whole time. It's been very uneven. And, um, you know, Impact definitely looks like they should just be happy to be here and be along for a, a ride on Kenny Omega's story. So, of course, this wasn't just going to end in a handshake and, you know, a pose down with our fist up, like, you know, let's say a boxing press conference would. This is wrestling. So it was going to end in a fight, of course. 
And it did. Once Kenny Omega got there, about halfway through the press conference, they stopped the whole press conference to play his entrance music. He comes in and, you know, Kenny and Don Callis, they're, you know, making slick comments about Rich Swan and about Impact and, you know, just saying stuff. And then eventually Kenny gets up to the podium, which Rich Swan never did. Kenny gets up to the podium and he's there just talking and he says something slick and Rich Swan stands up and he slaps Rich Swan in the face. And like any grown man, Rich Swan did what I think we would all do. He threw hands. So it turned into a fight. And that's where it went off the air. But this was hot. This was beyond cool. This was hot. I was honestly on the fence about buying this pay-per-view. Just because I don't have any doubts about how the main event's going to turn out. And I honestly still don't have any doubts how, about how the main event's going to turn out. But this was a really good build. And seeing more and more interest in it makes it more and more interesting, right? And then Impact came with another newsworthy item, which is that Mauro Ronaldo is going to be calling the main event. Is he going to be calling the whole show? Probably not. But the fact that he's going to show up just for this main event tells me that these two guys are going to be giving it their all. They're going to be doing everything they can to make Mauro give a, Mama Mia, did you see that? You know, all the crazy calls that Mauro Ronaldo is known for. They're going to be trying to pull that out of him. So these two guys are going to be working at the top of their game. And even though we all know how this match is going to turn out, or we have some idea how it's going to turn out, we may not know the specifics of the finish. But I think we all know Kenny Omega is going to win this title. I think they're both going to be on their A game. They're going to bring, they're going to bring a show that we are going to be glad that we paid for. And so I'm in. I'm sold. I'm ready for Rebellion. Um, I, I put in my order on Fight TV sometime this week, and I can't wait to see the show. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fun to watch. All right. The other newsworthy item that happened this week outside of the show was the you know unfortunate news that many people got released from their WWE contracts this week. And there's usually, you know, that's probably the first in a wave of several releases that will come. But some notable names that got their WWE release this week are Samoa Joe, uh, Peyton Royce, and Billy Kay, the Iconics, um, uh, Tucker from Heavy Machinery. Um, and, you know, there was there was there was a good amount of names of people that we were looking at. Oh, Chelsea Green was another one. You know, she's a former Impact talent. And I thought, I thought it was funny because Chelsea Green was the knockouts champion and she had one foot out the door. It would be nice to see her get a chance to be the knockouts champion or to compete as a knockout when she really is focused on being an Impact. I think I'd be interested in seeing, you know, what she can do. You know, everybody wants to run the AEW because it's a bigger platform, and I totally understand that. But I think what we're seeing now is that AEW, they're running into the same stuff, some of the some some of the same stuff that WWE is, which is having a bloated roster and not being able to do anything with everybody. Right? They signed up you know, all, all these guys that left Impact, LAX and 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 Ali and Brian Cage, and what are any of them doing on AEW TV right now? None. They're doing they're doing nothing. They, they try to squeeze Brian Cage into, you know, one little segment a week when they put Team Taz on Dynamite and they keep showing us that him and Ricky Starks are arguing and just, you know, leading to some fractures of a breakup of Team Taz. But why would the audience care about a breakup of Team Taz when we don't even see Team Taz every week? You know, AEW has two more shows that I know of. That I think the other two are both on YouTube. But if you don't watch those like I don't, then how would you know about these other things that are going on? AEW has more talent right now than they know what to do with. They've signed up a bunch of talent, and they're still trying to develop a bunch of talent. And at some point, you know, do you have enough spots for everybody? You know, listen, everybody can't be the main event on every show. So Impact is another place where people can work. You know, like I think some of these people need to go and work in Impact and 
have great matches and build their fan base back up and then just do some rotation. You know what I mean? When people get cut from WWE, go to AEW, go to Impact, you know, go all these places. Let's rotate on different shows, work with different people because is it better to be making more money and, and sitting in the back doing nothing? Maybe. But if you if you want to actually be on TV wrestling and doing stuff, then you probably want to go somewhere that is willing to use you. So, you know, everybody shouldn't just be lining up to get a contract from AEW and sit in the back or get a contract from WWE and sit in the back. You know, if you want to work, I think Impact, man, Impact definitely has room on their TV show for people with a name, people who can generate some buzz, because that's the thing that Impact needs more than anything else. So, Scott Demore saw the this news, and he, I got to give him credit for this. He came with a tweet that was just perfect for the moment. He said, if only there was an event coming around the time that those 90-day non-competes are up that would give all those WWE releases a chance to show their face, something to that effect. And he was obviously teasing and referring back to last year's Slammiversary, in which they did a great job building the buzz of the summer around who might show up from the big WWE mass releases that had taken place in April. And, you know, we here at the Impact Lounge and the Cool Factor particularly have criticized them for trying to piggyback too much off of what's going on in WWE. But damn it, it worked last year, and it looks like it's going to work again because I'm excited to see what happens at Slammiversary this year if this is going to be the annual tradition, right? The annual tradition of picking up the WWE cast-offs and seeing who's going to pop up an impact. I'm here for it. All right, so the show this week, Impact Wrestling, this was... Was this the debut on Thursday? No, last week. Was, this was the second week of Impact on Thursdays on Access TV. And the show kicked off with TJP and Josh Alexander wrestling a banger. I mean, my God, that was a match. If you haven't seen this show, go out of your way to see it because it was ridiculous. There was counter after counter both guys trying to lock in a submission tjp was trying to finish josh alexander with the arm bar josh alexander was trying to get tjp trapped in the ankle lock and both guys just kept finding ways to get the perfect counter until ultimately josh alexander was able to finish tjp off with a it was a double hook kind of pile driver um what was the announcer God. I'm sorry. Matt Stryker. Matt Stryker had a name for this move. I don't remember what the, what the name was, but the move looked brutal. It was a, a double hook, uh, a double underhook pile driver, and Josh Alexander got the win. That was great to see Josh Alexander get a win. You know, as I've said before, Josh Alexander is one of the talents that Impact needs to be building around going forward. So we need to see him getting some big wins in good matches. So it was great to see him getting a win. I'm going to say that was cool, obviously. Carl Anderson had a match against Crazy Steve, and honestly, who could care? Who could care? <laughs> Carl Anderson won with a spine buster. This match, this whole segment was math. This was the definition of math. Who could care? Um, we had a Swingers Palace segment. Ace Austin was in Swingers Palace. He wanted to know the odds of him winning his match against... TJP and Josh Alexander at, at Rebellion. So, TJP walks in, and he, he's with Josh Alexander, and they're both talking junk to each other. And TJP says, I don't need to know my odds. My friend already told me his odds, already told me the odds. And that was the cue for the return of little Petey Pump. Petey Williams walks in, Maple Leaf Muscle himself, and, of course, he starts cutting the Steiner Math promo. Now, this was funny. I was enjoying it. He was definitely hitting in, in a normal match, you got a 50-50 chance against a normal wrestler. But against me, you got a 3-33 and thirds chance. And then against you, you added it. You know, it was funny. He was doing it good. But it was the funniest part of this was they cut to, like, the Swingerellas and, and, and uh, Alicia Edwards. And everybody's just sitting there 
watching him cut this promo and everybody's jaw is on the floor. Like, can't believe, you know, what they're watching. So it, it was funny. This was a, a good segment. I thought this was cool. I got a good laugh out of that. We cut back to the ring. Eddie Edwards and Willie Mack are there and they call out Violent by Design for a fight. Of course, they're going to uh, oblige. Violet by Design comes down. They surround the ring, get ready to jump in and, and beat down the two guys that are in the ring, call out four guys. Just then, James Storm and Chris Saban come out and make it four on four. They chase off Violent, Violent by Design. And then James Storm cuts a promo challenging them to an eight-man tag between all those guys at Rebellion. You know, I felt like they just did this at the uh, Hardcore Justice. So I wasn't really excited about it. To me, this was meh. Scott Demore is in the back talking to Deanna Perrazzo and Susan. And he tells them, do not go out to the ring during Jazz's retirement ceremony. You know, I guess they had plans. You know, they were going to go and, and, and disturb it. You know, whatever. It was just it was, it was a lot of back and forth. Nothing really big was to it. Again, another segment that was meh. We go to a talk show, a talk show segment. Tennille Dashwood is her All About Me segment, and her guest was Gia Miller. And I thought this was funny because Gia comes in and she basically says, isn't this the set for Locker Room Talk? And it was the exact same set. It was like, the, you know, they're sitting in front of some whitish wall. There's a couch and a plant. It's the exact same set. But this was just, you know, a vehicle for Tanil to cut a promo about why she plans on winning the knockouts title, or why she thinks she's going to win the knockouts title from Deanna Perrazzo at Rebellion. I don't think she is, but okay. It's, it's good to have dreams. <laughs> this was, this was mad. This was mad. Didn't really move me one way or the other. Um, actually, if I was going to give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down or cool or not cool, I'm going to give this a cool because, listen, anytime I get Mean Gia on my screen, I am a fan. I am a fan. Ladies and gentlemen, Gia Miller. Okay? That's what I'm just saying. Just pay attention. Rising star. Rising star. She has talent, people. Talent. She has things that she has things to offer to the business to the television show, to every segment that she's in. And I, for one, appreciate all of her assets, everything that she brings to the table, okay? All of it. All right. So Jazz comes out to the ring for her retirement ceremony. She has Jordan Grace in the ring with her, and she wants to give her a speech. Of course, Fire and Flavor interrupt her. They come out, and they're clowning them as Jazz is trying to give her a speech. Fire and Flavor come down to the ring, and they end up in a, a, a match with Jazz and Jordan. Jazz and Jordan win, so that was cool. So, uh, you know, Jazz actually gets to have her hand raised. You know, she gets to go out. Her last match gets to be a win. Then she gets the mic back again after they beat Fire and Flavor, and she gives her a real retirement speech. And it's cool because the locker room emptied. Everybody came out, and they're just, you know, banging on the ring and, 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 and cheering Jazz on. By the way, Gia Miller got up on the ring apron and again, a talent unlike any other right now. You just gotta, you just gotta give her props for what she's bringing to the table. <laughs> so after we see Jazz's retirement speech, we go backstage and we see Scott Demore talking to Fire and Flavor who are upset obviously because they just got beat up by Jordan and Jazz. And Scott Demore tells them that since they just got beat up by Jordan and Jazz, that Fire and Flavor will now have to defend their titles against Jordan and Jazz at Rebellion. They're mad. They storm off. Jordan and Jazz come on. And Jazz says, listen, I'm a woman of my word. I'm going to honor the stipulation. I lost to Deanna Perrazzo, so that means I'm done. But she tells Jordan that she does have the perfect replacement partner for her. And so this is a nice little cliffhanger. I liked it. This whole segment went together. It left us with a cliffhanger to see what's going to happen next. Who's going to be Jordan Grace's partner? They've been teasing Taylor Wilde. Is Taylor Wilde going to be the replacement? I don't know. But I liked it. This was good. To me, this whole thing was cool. Next, we had Brian Myers coming out for a match 
against uh, an opponent that was going to be picked by Matt Cardona. So Matt Cardona comes out next, and he announces that his opponent he's picked for Brian Myers is Jake something. Okay. <clears throat> Here's where this gets a little bit hairy. So Jake comes out, and, you know, Jake looks great. He's doing his thing. He's, he's a powerful guy. He's knocking Brian Myers all around the ring until Brian Myers does the classic heel move of running away from the fight. He's running around the ring. He's getting Jake to chase him. Then he gets in the ring. When Jake comes in to chase, chase after Brian Myers into the ring, Myers hits him with the running diving clothesline that he calls the, what is it? It's the roster cut. Yeah, I think it's called the roster cut. And he pins Jake. He pins Jake in the middle of the ring. And I was a little bit taken aback by this. Because, again, just like I was talking about um, Josh Alexander being somebody that Impact needs to be building around and it's I, he needs to be winning big matches, I say the same thing about Jake something. Jake is another talent that is representative of the young the young base of the Impact Wrestling's roster. And I feel like I don't want to see him losing to Brian Myers right now. I don't. I like Brian Myers, and I think Brian Myers has a great future with Impact. But, I mean, I just don't want to see Jake something losing right now. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everybody has to have a winning streak like Goldberg where you never, you know, you never lose or anything like that. Um, it doesn't have to be undefeated streaks. Doesn't have to be all of that stuff. But guys got to always be looking strong. And for for Jake to lose in a quick match to Brian Myers, I'm just like that. Just didn't feel like the right move to me, man. So to me, that part was not cool. Not cool for that at all. All right. So after the Jake something Brian Myers match, Brian Myers kind of crawls over into the corner and gets the microphone. And then he lets Matt Cardona know that he's picked an opponent for them. And he says something He says something to the effect of, it's hard to see with this eye patch, but it's even harder when the lights go out. And then the lights go out, and then behind Matt Cardona appears Sammy Callahan, who attacks Matt Cardona from behind, and they go to the ring. So then Matt Cardona and Sammy Callahan, they go on to have a match. Now listen, Sammy Callahan... He can pull a great match out of anybody. This guy got the only good match out of Brian Cage as a world champion. Okay? If that don't tell you all, <laughs> everything you need to know about Sammy Callahan's abilities, I don't know what will. And this was good, too. Um, you know, Matt Cardona, I, I, I still see Zack Ryder when I look at him. But this was good, man. This was good. I enjoyed watching this match. You know, he, he did a lot of moves. You know, some some daring stuff. He did some some of his played the hits. You know, the woo woo woo, the the broski boot. He did all of that, and uh, in the end, Sammy Callahan wins with a package pile driver. Uh, the line of the night after the match, uh, <laughs> Sammy Callahan gets the mic and says, "Woo woo woo, just took care of that piece of trash." <laughs> Yeah, man, that was good. That was good. That was good. Obviously, you know, the the nice little callback to the Zack Ryder days. And look, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Matt Cardona should not be beating anybody of note in Impact Wrestling. He shouldn't. I'm sorry. Unless he commits to being, you know, a, a, a long-term competitor in Impact, everybody is going to see this guy as Zack Ryder, which is to say, talented guy, entertaining but nothing special. And he should not be beating any of your talent that is a pillar of your company. So a guy like Sammy Callahan, for example, should not be losing to Matt Cardona. That was far and away the right move. That was absolutely cool for me. Now, apparently there's like a thing where they just like to roll one segment into another because Sammy Callahan got the pin and didn't leave the ring. He got the microphone and calls out Trey Miguel and basically tells Trey Miguel, hey, you need to be thanking me because I'm the reason you were in the main event of Hardcore Justice. I took out Tommy Dreamer, which allowed you the opportunity to 
hop into the main event of Hardcore Justice. Trey says, I'm not going to join you. And of course, that leads to a fight. Uh, they Sammy Callahan leaves Trey laying in the middle of the ring. And I guess there's more to come on that. That was cool. I'll take that. Listen, Trey, Trey Miguel is another one of those guys who was one of the pillars of Impact Wrestling going forward. So, again, this is a guy that needs to be working with high-profile pro, high talent like Sammy Callahan doing fun, exciting stuff that we're looking forward to seeing. So, uh, anything you can do to continue his story, I'm all for that. To me, this was cool. We got a promo by the Impact World Champions Finn Juice, basically saying that they're coming back. Uh, they're coming back at Rebellion and they're going to defend their titles against the Good Brothers. And um, you know, after that, we went to we went to the uh, we went to the press conference, which was you know the end of the show. That's basically where I started, so no need to really go over that stuff again. But listen, man, that was great. This this was this was a, a a really good show in terms of setting things up going forward. Um, like I said earlier, this got me interested in actually buying Rebellion, whereas I wasn't interested in buying Rebellion before. I'm interested to see how Mauro Ronaldo is going to be. Uh, I'm interested to see what these guys are going to do to bring the most out of Mauro Ronaldo. Um, I'm, I'm interested in Rebellion now. I'm going to buy Rebellion. I'm going to buy it on <clears throat> my Fight TV app, and I'm going to sit back and watch it and see what comes of it. I, you know, Impact, if nothing else, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Under the Don Callis, Scott Demore regime, these guys have shown the ability to create a buzz under short circumstances, to generate some interest under short circumstances. And, I mean, this just seems to be the stuff that they're really, really good at. Because if you if, if you look at it, listen, I'm going to give you guys full disclosure here, okay? <clears throat> Last week, me and BQ were trying to scramble and come up with, 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 with a show to get a show out for you guys last week. And I said, look, man, it's WrestleMania weekend. There's nothing major happening in Impact right now. There's no reason to force a show out. Nobody gives a damn what's happening in Impact right now. <laughs> and I was right. And you know what? Not only was I right, but Impact felt that way too. You know how I know Impact felt that way? Because they saved all of these newsworthy items for this week. And they dropped. They dropped bombs. They 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 hit us with big angles, stuff to get us interested in the show. And listen, that was a smart move. That was a smart, smart move. I thought Impact has has played this well. And going into this show, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I got a question for you guys at home. Everybody listening to the show, watching it all around the world. I talked earlier about the releases coming from uh, this past week in WWE. I want to know from you guys, who do you think should come to Impact and how would you like to see them used? Do you have any any big plans? Like I saw somebody make a point that they think Samoa Joe should come back to Impact and they think when Samoa Joe comes back to Impact, they think he should get a deal similar to what... Um, Who's this guy? Marty Skrull got with Ring of Honor, where they basically make him the booker. And I was like, man, that actually sounds like a really good idea. I think that'll probably be a, a, a dope fit for somebody like uh, for somebody like Samoa Joe because he's obviously a great a great impact mind. Um, I'm uh, sorry, a great wrestling mind. I mean, it, when you watch Samoa Joe, he can do everything that there is to do in the wrestling business. He can do uh, commentary. You know, his promos were amazing. This guy can really do it all. So who's a person that was recently released by WWE that you would like to see get a chance to come back to Impact and see what they would do? You know, who do you think maybe left something on the table, uh, like I mentioned earlier about Chelsea Green? Or <clears throat> who do you think 
maybe has something to prove, uh, like let's say the Iconics, right? Who do you think would do a great job, um, or who do you think would be a great fit for present day Impact Wrestling that was recently released, released by WWE? Drop your comments right below, leave your name and where you're from so I can give you a shout out. Just like some of the people who dropped comments on our last video, the one from two weeks ago, and I'm getting ready to talk to some of these people right now. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. Kelly Rodriguez said, I think what needs to happen is that AEW should mention Impact and let fans know to check them out on a weekly basis to start having a talent exchange program. Also, Impact needs to hire some young, hungry talent because Impact does a good job on building talent up. So Kelly, uh, I'm sorry, that's not Kelly. That's Clay, Clay Rodriguez. Clay, I totally agree. Impact does do a good job building up talent. And I think Impact is in talent building mode, mode right now. Um, I think after the last kind of exodus of talent, I think Impact is in a mode of building right now. And I think, you know, the pillars of the this, this current build are going to be guys like Trey Miguel, Josh Alexander, um, Ace Austin, Chris Bay, um, you know, Sammy Callahan is always a constant. You know, there's a few, you know, really good, strong, young talent that Impact is building. And I think they need to continue, you know, continue to build with those talents. And this, to me, will be the first time since they had guys like, you know, James Storm, AJ Styles, um, you know, Christopher, Christopher Daniels, Fr Frankie Kazarian, guys that really were young and unknown around the world that could just be the base of, for Impact Wrestling. I think they have an opportunity to do that and build that right now. So I think they need to be selective with who they bring in going forward. But um, in, in, in terms of your AEW comment, I also agree with that. AEW needs to do a lot more mentioning of Impact uh, compared to how, how much Impact mentions AEW. And again, listen, I get it. AEW is not getting the rub from being associated with Impact in the way that Impact is getting the rub from being associated with AEW. Impact is the, P is, is the promotion that stands to benefit from this relationship much more. I totally get that. Totally agree with that. But it's the old saying of how you don't want to talk down on your opponent after you beat them or before you beat them because if you talk down on your opponent and then you beat them, well, you just beat nobody, right? So you still want to build up the people who you're working with. I think AEW should do more to mention Impact a little more. You know, Eddie Edwards, if you guys go check on Twitter, Eddie Edwards cut a promo a few weeks ago saying how uh, he basically was saying what a lot of fans are thinking and feeling, which is that this seems to be a pretty one-sided relationship. This forbidden door, you know, it doesn't seem to be open to any other women. Um... AEW never seems to mention Impact. Impact talent never seems to be invited to come on AEW. And apparently the talent is feeling that way too. So I agree with you. You know, I think this needs to be a little more, you know, uh, this needs to be a little more back and forth. We need to see some Impact talent getting over on AEW, showing up on AEW. And not I, I've been consistent in saying, I don't want this to feel like there's a an Impact versus AEW like, war or collision or invasion angle, right? People love to try to talk about something that they've already seen and try and remix it in their head, like the invasion angle. This is not the invasion angle, right? So <laughs> let's not try to make it that. But I do think that a consistent working relationship is more of like how we saw a private party come over to Impact and how Sammy Guevara was supposed to come over to Impact. Okay, well... Let's see Moose show up on AEW. Let's see Chris Bay show up on AEW, right? Like, to me, that's a more even working relationship. So I definitely agree with you on that one. All right. <clears throat> Greg Blanton said, James Storm should replace EY, in my opinion. Creative can easily write Storm into the storyline that he took the leader of Violent by Design out 
by other members to come to come to Storm and talk him into the leadership role of the group, saying EY was weak, Storm could be a much stronger leader. Storm then reverts back to when he was developing the cult in the company. You know, actually, I think that's a good idea. I like James Storm as the leader of, what was it called? The Revolution? He's like, there's always one more. Room for one more in the Revolution. I thought that was actually a really good uh, character that James Storm was doing. And James Storm is very good. I think, you know, James Storm just needs to be always constantly engaged with some type of character that's asking him to, you know, push what he's bringing, what he's delivering. And James Storm will deliver for you constantly if you give him good stuff to do. I think it's actually a good idea. Um, now... We all heard that EY got hurt at the, the last set of tapings, but we've also seen him on the show this week. So, you know, maybe the, sh the tapings that we're seeing this week were before he got hurt, or, you know, who knows? Maybe that match wasn't exactly where he got hurt. Who knows? But he was on TV, and he looked perfectly fine on this past episode of Impact. So, who knows? All right, let's see what we got here. Brando Skiandra? Sk Skiandra says, I think after the pandemic, there will be an all in two with AEW Impact and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Listen, I think that's a, a great idea. I would love that. And not only that, I think Impact Talent deserves that. Impact Talent has been working really hard in front of no fans for, uh, you know, for a year now. And it would be great for them to get a chance to go and perform at a show in front of you know, an, an arena full of fans, uh, 10,000 screaming happy fans. I think that'd be great. You know, people like Jordan Grace, who have been just in there busting it for impact during the pandemic. Talents like Chris Bay, you know, just all the great talent that impact has. I think that'd be amazing if they could get a chance to perform in front of a packed house like that. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, so Humble Beast said, great podcast, guys, and be on the lookout for at least three new knockouts. I like how you guys give more of an in-depth review of Impact, not just a show review. Humble Beast, thank you. We're, uh, you know, doing our best to deliver quality content to you. Um, you know, I hope you still are enjoying the content with me and OBQ. Um, you know, feel free to drop your comments. And yeah, you know, keep watching. Thank you for listening. You know, keep uh, sharing sharing your, your thoughts with us. All right, let's see. Mark Clark says, I think the Thursday move is good to go unopposed and hopefully will increase the viewership numbers. They have to start the move with a big bang and have an amazing show to keep any uplift of users. Uh, Impact needs to grow and then they'll hopefully fill out the roster more who from the Indies are possibly leaving a large company would you guys want an impact? So that's a good question, Mark. I like that question. If I had to pick somebody that I'd like to see an impact that, uh, you know, is either on the Indies or from a large company, I think they need to fill out this knockouts roster. So, you know, whoever is the best available talent on the Indies, I, I'd, I'd like to see them. And listen, these wrestlers all know people because they work with them. Um, wrestlers for AEW and for Impact, they still work independent dates. So they know all these people. So they can go right into the locker room. They can say, hey, Jordan, who's somebody you're out there working with that you'd like to get a chance with? By the way, apparently Eva Lise, she's uh, <laughs> run her course with AEW. Bring her into Impact. Because Impact obviously has no problem working with people who have horrible reputations. So bring in Ivelisse. I'm a big Ivelisse fan. I like her work. I like her look. I like, you know, her attitude, you know, to as a as a TV villain, as a wrestler. I think she's great to watch. So bring in Ivelisse. I think she would be a nice little shot in the arm for the Knockouts division, create some nice matchups. And, you know, I think the Knockouts division really just could use some fresh blood, some fresh legs, some fresh talent, some fresh voices. So I would sign somebody like Eva Lee to boost that Knockouts division. All right, let's see. Uh, the Jock Freak says, the fact that AEW barely mentions Impact on their show just so it shows how one-sided it all feels. 
you kind of talked about that a little bit earlier, but I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, you know, the mentioning the benefits of this do feel kind of one-sided, but also going back to when I talked about the press conference, you, you, you got to understand again, on one hand, we can say that AEW doesn't mention impact and that they don't give impact talent, uh, an outlet to be on their show, which is true. But on the other hand, when you look at the promotion for an impact pay-per-view, not an AEW pay-per-view, for an impact pay-per-view. There's more media coverage, more people willing to put their faces on an impact TV show, on an impact press conference, right, next to an impact event than you've seen at any point in the previous three, four, five, six years. So impact is getting a boost as well. There is mutual benefits going on here. It's just not it's not the exact same thing, right? It's not, it's not, I'll give you a talent, you give us a talent. It's more like, I'll give you a talent and we'll also help you raise your profile. You know what I mean? And I've said before that I don't think AEW's mission here is to build up Impact Wrestling. I think AEW's mission here is to say to the wrestling fans of the world, hey, if you don't like what WWE is offering you, there's all this other great wrestling. There's AEW, there's New Japan, and there's Impact, and we're all one big happy family. And if you don't like WWE, come over here and get some variety. And I think that's what they're doing. I think that's the goal, and it's working. They're, they're being the bridge, right? The forbidden door, if you will, right? To all of the wrestling uh, fans who no matter what type of, of, of wrestling you may like to be able to see the alternatives in one place and I think that's aew's real goal here is to uplift wrestling as a whole for wrestling fans uh, so that they see that it's not just WWE or nothing all right let's see bland skies 28 says so Nevea finally turned on havoc which is something I guess, but now they have nobody for Kiera and Tasha to battle. Clearly, bringing back the knockouts title was a huge, knockouts tag titles was a huge mistake. I mean, they haven't signed any new knockouts, and Kylie and Ty leaving Impact also didn't help the knockouts division. I agree with you 100%. Not necessarily that bringing back the knockouts title was a huge mistake, but that there needed to be more effort a more thought put into this. You know, BQ had said, who probably over a year ago when he came up with this idea that one thing they could do with the Knockouts Tag titles is have the Knockouts Tag champions tour different indie shows defending those titles. I thought that was actually a great idea to create content, get other promotions involved in Impact, get fans around involved in, in Impact. But, you know, with the tenuous state of... of of, uh, of of live events right now. You know, live events, I guess, are starting to come back. But, you know, listen, everybody's not fully vaccinated. And I don't know how many people are out there going to live events right now. So that idea is not as viable now as it was then. And Impact, if they want to keep these knockouts tag titles going, they're going to have to bring in more, more knockouts. Because just trying different combinations of the people that are already on the roster... That's going to get old really quick. It's going to get old really, really quick. As a matter of fact, you can say it probably has already gotten pretty old. All right. I'll take one more. Let's find a good one. Let's see. All right. TR50003 says, I think it's a good move, impact move to Thursday. I think they don't stand a chance against NXT. <coughs> with a lack of talent and not building new fresh stars. And with them losing Taya, two members of the Rascals, and Kylie, Melissa Santos no longer hosting Impact on Twitch, because Impact is too foolish to offer her a new contract. Plus, 
Moose and Jordan Grace, future and impact uncertain because their contract's coming to an end. It's not looking good for impact at all. If impact would have done what they were supposed to by bringing in fresh. Oh God, this is a whole soliloquy here by bringing in fresh new talent and concentrating on top talent and start coming out of their pockets to keep people like Ty on long-term basis and stop taking these talents from fans for granted, they would have had NXT, given NXT a run for their money. Also, it's a time for Impact in their partnership with AEW. This partnership is going nowhere. Impact is not gaining anything from this. AEW is making a mockery out of Impact. And for AEW to continue on Impact territory and promote Dynamite and dissing Impact, none of them suffer. No consequences <laughs> makes zero sense. And what is the point of partnering with AEW if they weren't even allow Impact stars to come invade their show or AEW send any one stars to Impact? Excuse me, any more stars to Impact. Only thing Impact is gaining from this partnership is more haters and trolls. It's too one-sided. If this doesn't get any better by next month, then Impact end their partnership with AEW and start standing on their own two feet. Impact needs to do better than this. Otherwise, it will become 2017 all over again where they end up alienating both the fans and talents. Impact has no more excuses now. Wow. Whew. All right. Um, a lot to unpack there. Okay. <laughs> Woo, let's uh, take a sip of tea before we dive into this one. Hmm. Swing of tea for the working man. Um, listen, we covered the Impact AEW partnership. And like I said, I think that there are benefits here. It's not a, qu a clear tit for tat like we talked about before. I'm not going to go back into all of that again. Um, as far as, you know, letting talent go, at some point you got to give these guys a little bit of credit. One thing that the Scott Demore Don Callis regime has done well is transition from outgoing talent to upcoming talent. They've done a really good job of building new talent and getting you interested in what they've got going on. So as tough as it is, Let's give these guys a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that they have a plan and that there's some sort of plan for what's going to happen next. Do I know what that plan is? No, I don't. But I think they've done a good job generating buzz on short notice, and I think they've done a good job of elevating talents from, you know, from, from lower card to higher card. And so let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. I do think that you know, when Jordan Grace and Moose leave the show, it is going to leave a noticeable hole in the show. But, you know, let's just, let's let's see what they do. I think they'll figure something else out and, you know, they'll figure some way to keep the shows interesting. All right. So once again, thank you guys so much for all your questions. Send them in, drop them right there, right down below the bottom of the video. Um, I'll be sure to get to as many of them as I can. And even if I don't give them a shout out on the show, I'll try to respond in the in the in the YouTube comments, you know, throughout the week. Um, you know, thank you guys for listening. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's you know keep bringing more people into the conversation. Share this video on your social medias. Um, you know, post it on Twitter. Post it on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at tw talking about. Uh, follow BQ. Um, at BQ and you know follow the Impact Lounge and yeah man let's you know let's keep these wrestling conversations going if there's any good Impact stuff going on feel free to tweet me I love to engage you guys I love to have conversations um, yeah man thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll be back next week with actually I'm gonna be on vacation next week so we'll see if I can get a show out to you next week but I'll definitely be active on the Twitter and you know like I said I'll be responding to your comments. I want to see what you guys think, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you hate, what you love. Let me know. Tweet me at TW Talking About. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Oh, oh, oh.